So, uh, Super Mario Odyssey, right guys? Potentially the game I've been looking forward to most in 2017, it had a lot of expectations to meet. So, as the final cap in the year of the 3D platformer, how did it do? Well, let's just say that I completed Odyssey 100% in under a week, and hopefully you can tell by the title of this video that, yeah, yeah, it lived up to the hype. Looking back on my experience, there was so much to love, especially in all the small details and polish, but there were three main aspects of its game design that have stolen my heart and made this my favorite 3D Mario of all time. Let's talk about it. The Italian Wonder is back, and better than ever, running, jumping, and collecting in ways we've never seen before. But what stood out to me right away was how it masterfully tackled theming. Of course, you're still chasing after Bowser as he's trying to set up the most extravagant wedding of all time, but this time around, Mario is truly on an odyssey, a journey to so many different worlds and locales. It seems like Nintendo finally heard the complaint about there not being anything new or imaginative in the Mario universe anymore. The globe isn't just inhabited by Goombas and Koopas. There are so many new and memorable species to interact with. From maraca-shaking musicians, to colorful dinner forks, to actual real people. Man, that still is so weird. Unlike previous Mario installments, there isn't a flat amount of collectibles to unlock new stages. Like a sealed door requiring 30 stars to progress, for example. Instead, there's a specific number that you need to hunt down in each location, which ensures that you explore every set piece thoroughly before continuing. You can't just touch down and say, eh, I think I'll move on. They want you to see it all. There also isn't a hub world of any kind that Mario warps back to after collecting a moon, but rather it lets you keep running around to discover what each district has to offer. It's clear from the start that Mario Odyssey is all about the adventure, not the final destination. And of course it helps that each place you'll visit has so much to do and catchy events to keep you interested. Much like Breath of the Wild, there are so many collectibles hiding in every corner that it never feels stale or like you've seen it all on your first run through. Not to mention that defeating Bowser is basically only half the experience. But even further, Mario isn't just on an odyssey through different settings, he's on an odyssey through his own history. No other series could have so many nods and homages to its own franchise. It's a celebration of everything Mario has accomplished over the last 35 years, something only a true gaming icon could pull off. From the costumes and creatures, to the dialogue and easter eggs. I won't spoil the final kingdom after you beat the game, but just know that I don't think I've ever seen fan service done so well. It blew my mind to reflect on how much influence Mario has had over his lifetime. And Odyssey truly takes you on a ride that will leave you with a stupid grin on your face the entire time. Now, what drew me in next was how perfectly the new edition of Cappy fit into the equation this time around, mainly because of how versatile he is. The capture mechanic feels so natural that it's a wonder how he wasn't already in all the previous Mario games before it. Possessing the enemies you've encountered countless times before gave them new meaning, and and helped you think outside the box to solve problems. Each one felt different from the last, and interacted with the environment in special ways. It'll introduce an idea and expand on it, but then move on before it overstays its welcome. And showing you right from the start that yes, you can even take over a giant T-Rex, teaches you to throw your cap at everything, and you'll most likely get some sort of positive result. Cappy can help you attack enemies at further distances, and even home in on baddies or crowd control with a flick of the wrist. He helps serve the theming by being an important story character as well as your aesthetic, blending in with all the different outfits you can collect. Cappy is your guide in mechanics as well as direction. But perhaps most of all, he's a key factor in the third area that I felt drove Odyssey into new territory for a Mario title, the movement. Our favorite plumber has always had great flow, but just how Super Mario 64 introduced us to new abilities such as the long jump and ground pound, Odyssey elevated its movement once again and gave us so much more to play around with. At first, moving quickly didn't feel so intuitive. The normal dive button has now been replaced with a hat throw that stops your momentum. But a quick look at the action guide shows you exactly how much more functional Mario has become. Of course he can triple jump, side flip, dive, and wall kick, but now he can roll around for speedy ground coverage, and even hop on Cappy as a platform for extra distance. You can jump out of a ground pound for more height, or do a little twirl right after your cap returns to you as well. It was almost overwhelming to see all these options near the beginning, but after a little practice, it felt just as second nature as the ground pounder long jump did in Mario 64. 
and the importance of Cappy resetting your abilities after bouncing on him can't be understated. This opens up a Pandora's box of travel choices. You've probably seen this example floating around the internet of being able to climb up this tower in the Sand Kingdom with some careful platforming. It took me a few tries, but once you reach the face outcropping, you can backflip onto the roof, and this is where the revelation hit me, Nintendo rewards you with some coins at the top. They want you to explore and try things that might seem impossible at first glance. From this moment on, I started looking all over the place for peculiar ledges or hidden secrets that appear to be out of reach. This not only helped me find moons that I would have otherwise ignored, but helped me master Mario's movement overall, causing my go-to combo to be a long jump to a hat throw and dive, to another hat throw and a dive, just to get some extra distance and reach places that would normally take much longer to cross. These types of gaps are actually all over over the game once you start looking for them, and it never stopped being satisfying to clear them. The coolest part is that Odyssey had to be designed with this in mind, because they encourage your behavior with things like the Koopa Freerunners, extra missions added in after completing your quest that challenge you to a race with the goal of traversing the entire stage as quickly as possible. At first, these competitions might seem insurmountable, especially when they add in another racer that moves lightning fast. But if you don't know the best route to take, you can actually just hang back and watch the other Koopas for some ideas of how to jump and dive to success. And eventually, it feels like a piece of cake. The seemingly linear path of the base game opens up to become a multitude of options once you realize Mario's movement capabilities. It'll even give you a little pat on the back with some affirming words by Cappy if you somehow sequence break the intended path. Not to mention the speedrunning potential that's only enhanced by this type of design. Because of the sheer amount of moons and different alternatives for movement, each player's run could look wildly different from another. And at least this early on, the routes are changing all the time. This all stems back to the design philosophy Mario has had since his inception. Easy to learn, hard to master. These games toe the line of being accessible to such a wide array of skill levels without ever having an actual difficulty setting. There are faster methods just waiting to be unlocked if you're talented or observant enough to spot them. The Brutals, for example, all have quick kill opportunities that might be hard to notice at first, but are obvious go-tos once you know about them. Every stage or hurdle was designed with the lowest and highest level of players in mind. Each bonus room has two moons to collect, the regular intended one for completion, and another hiding away or in a much harder to reach location. It tests the player and rewards them if they test the game back. All of these factors combine together to make an absolutely incredible experience that I didn't want to quit until I'd seen and done everything it had to offer. And it doesn't hurt that there's so much charm and little details in every aspect. From the doofy mustache donned by all of Mario's victims, to the way you quickly fall through a pipe if you ground pound on it, with a different animation and sound effect as well. To the simple fact that there's three ways to enter the Odyssey. They didn't have to do this, there's no reason to, but they did it anyway. Also, you can play catch with the doggo, 10 out of 10. Nintendo is truly the Disney of video games, and I mean that in the best way I can compliment a team. The magic of a memorable adventure comes from those glimmers of uniqueness that you can't help but smile at. I loved every minute of my time with Super Mario Odyssey, and I think it's because of its cohesiveness, its versatility, and gratification in its movement mechanics that prove to me why Nintendo will always be on top when it comes to platformers. Mario may not be out of tricks up his sleeve yet, but this title is a landmark in game design that any prospective creator should take note of. Lots and lots of notes. Thanks for watching another episode of Good Game Design. I'll see you next time, and stay frosty, my friends. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed today's look at Mario Odyssey. If you've played the game, what stood out to you the most? And what were the parts of its design that you enjoyed? Tell me in the comments below, and let's talk about it. I wanted to give a huge thanks to my Patreon supporters this month. They help keep the show running. If you ever want to support the channel and get some cool rewards in the process, you can do so at patreon.com slash snowmangaming. Be sure to subscribe for more analytical content, follow me on Twitter for updates on future projects, and finally check out my friend heavy Eyed's new video on the 3D platformers of this year and how they stack up. I'm in it, so you know it's gonna be good. Alright, I'm out of here, later!